The Yu-Gi-Oh! offseason is soon to be upon us, and there's actually some things that you can be productive in Yu-Gi-Oh! during the offseason. So let's go ahead and dive on into it, shall we? Go ahead and throw some pancakes on my face and call me dad. I'm not going to put it in a bottle and breastfeed it to you. That intro creep you out? Well, then you better get ready for a spicy video, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever living boo boo stain off of that like and subscribe button as we climb even higher the 1200 light. We're at almost 1,230 subscribers, ladies and gentlemen. Do you remember when we were at 700 subscribers and we were getting maybe 50 views a video? Now we are at over 1200 and we are still hard, and I really do appreciate all the support. Hope you're having a fantastic day. In case my hair looks funky, it's because your boy just got on out of the shower. I tend to think about videos while I'm in the shower, think about life, the universe, things that are interesting to me. And it occurred to me as I was lathering myself up, <laughs> this sounds so creepy, uh, we are soon to be in the Yu-Gi-Oh! offseason. Now, for those of you who maybe aren't competitive in Yu-Gi-Oh! or aren't familiar with the Yu-Gi-Oh! offseason, maybe you haven't been playing all that long, the Yu-Gi-Oh! offseason is considered to be what is after the North American World Championship qualifier because that's usually the last nationals that happens amongst all the nationals, European, South American, what have you. And it's a time where you can get a lot of fucking Yu-Gi-Oh! cards for cheap, ladies and gentlemen. Like, I'm talking Fenrir's are like 30 to 35 right now. You'll probably be able to get Fenrir's for 20 to 25 afterwards, and or after Nationals. And that's because the after Nationals, there really are no more competitive events for the season, usually until like we get a new ban list or something like that. So a lot of people will tend to offload their cards and sell everything because it's probably going to get hit on the next ban list. And like what we saw with this June ban list, Konami ain't afraid to hit decks that have only been out for a month just to kind of help clean up the format. Now, this for me kind of puts the Yu-Gi-Oh! offseason in a bit of a different light. And this is why I wanted to talk about this because the Yu-Gi-Oh! offseason is perfect usually because if you're trying to finish a deck core like my dad trying to finish rank 8 Axis, you can get cards for cheaper if you're willing to take that Pepsi challenge. You know, if you think that Fenrir isn't going to get hit to one in our, what will probably be like our September ban list, maybe they'll give us one in late August, but probably more like September, then you can go and get three Fenrirs on the cheap and you get rewarded with all the chicken nuggy monies because you got your cards for cheap. Triple Tactic Thrust are like $60 plus a piece. Probably, maybe after Nats, they drop to like 50 or 40 a piece. I don't think they'll drop to 30 a piece. But these are ways that you can get cards on the cheap. If you want to play the new Synchro, Synchron, Dot Deck, Electric, Boogaloo, whatever the fuck, out of Duelist Nexus, you can wait to get your Assault Synchrons out of Monsters Revenge after Nationals when maybe they're a little bit cheaper. Right now on pre-sales, they're 30s, which you shouldn't be getting stuff on pre-sale because you're paying a massive premium. Um, so this is a great time to buy deck cores on the cheap, even just to have them, you know, even if something gets hit, maybe it comes back later, you know, Sprite as a deck core right now, I would argue is not all that expensive. And especially after Nats, it's going to be a lot cheaper, ladies and gentlemen, like I'm personally offloading a bunch of cards. Um, and I even traded for some stuff at the Boca Raton regional. So like I'm poised to make just over $240 back on like the over 400 that I spent on purely along with the other stuff that I spent for Sprite is probably more like 500, close to 500. Um, so I'm definitely going to make over half of my money back. Plus I traded away my three Kurakaras and my peaceful planet Calarium for a Baron and then three ultimate rare copies of Sky Striker Ace Ray. I'm thinking about blinging out the deck. So like that together, along with the over 240 bucks I'm going to be making tomorrow is over $400. So I've made over half my money back from purely Sprite. And this is what I've talked about in the past, how I buy whatever deck I want to play and then turn around and sell it. And then I always have a constant flow of money. Or as they say on Shark Tank, I have a constant cash flow of money so that like I'm never in the, what would it be? The black? I'm never in the black when it comes to my Yu-Gi-Oh! investments. I'm usually like always breaking even if not a little bit positive. Maybe I lose 20 to hopefully not $50 in the motion in the commotion of everything either way like if i'm working a job or you know whatever the case may be then you know i can make that money back and then some or whether my stock investments i get my you know every few months dividend payout for my stock investments and all that other stuff i do a lot of stock stuff on the side in case i haven't already talked about that on the channel for all you new subscribers so in the Yu-Gi-Oh! off season you know, you can get cards for cheap. You can trade for cards for cheap because everything is on the down low. 
At the same time, it's also a bit risky, especially if you're investing in meta deck cores just to have or to play a meta deck for cheap during the off season at locals or a regional that's upcoming once Duelist Nexus drops and then we're in the Duelist Nexus regional season. You know, there are going to be people who still play their meta decks because they want to get their invite for 2024 nationals. Again, though, you have to keep in mind that you know, uh, especially in this Yu-Gi-Oh! offseason, which is why I say it's in a bit of a different light because of what happened with the June ban list. You know, we get Duelist Nexus at the end of July. Then we go into August and probably by late August, I would say more often or more likely than not, some point in September, early to mid-September, we'll get our next new ban list. And probably by the time we get Duelist Nexus, people are already going to be talking about what's going to happen on our next ban list because, I mean, what, this Sunday we'll know what the OCG ban list is because they actually fucking communicate with their players and tell them when the shit's going to fucking drop. I digress. Um, so you have that to discuss. And I know it seems like kind of crazy. Like, Avery, you're talking about shit like August and September. We just got a ban list in June. Like, we're still in June. Like, what the hell? And that's because... That's just the flow of the game. Like every three to four months, usually on average, we get a new core set. Then we jump into that regional season for that set. And, you know, the cycle repeats itself. And I say again that this off season's in a different light. And I'm really pushing that home because of what happened with the June ban list. Super Heavy Samurai was only a meta deck for like, what, a fucking month, month and a half. And then Konami said, okay, the Link Monster is now banned. This is why I say that you need to be careful with your investments. You know, if you want to play the Synchron deck and stuff like that, Konami has already shown with this new ban list, look guys, we can hit a deck whenever the fuck we want. We just put Assault Synchron and Monstrous Revenge, Konami could come out and say, Assault Synchron's banned, or Junk Speeder is banned, or, I don't know, Shooting Quasar Dragon is banned. Like, I'm not saying that they're going to do that, but it's just an example. You know, people invest in this deck, they play it for a month, month and a half at full power, and all of a sudden, gets hit to one. You know, look at Delicious Memory. I played fucking full power purely for like a month and a half, if that, and then Delicious Memory got hit to one. Luckily, I still got my invite to Nats playing purely Sprite, and I do still feel, as the self-appointed purely king, <laughs> uh, that you should be playing purely, spite, purely Sprite if you want a going first build to purely, if not, and then just play a pure build, no pun intended, going second. That's besides the point. But prices are going to be low because of the fact that I feel like people, myself included, will be afraid to invest in Duelist Nexus until we get a new ban list because who knows what the hell they're going to hit out of the set like a month or month and a half out. And this is why I think that we'll probably get a list in September. Plus, Konami in the past is notoriously known for putting out lists in September. Uh, if you look at like their past lists and stuff like that, when they've put them out, they've usually had them in September. That would get us until the end of the year in January, and then we get a new balance around like December, January time. And so it, it makes this off season very awkward because we don't know what's going to happen. You know, we have an idea of what will probably happen based upon like what wins Nats and things like that. But, you know, me going into this off season, I'm selling off all my cards preferably before Nats so that I can get the most amount of money back as I can because if I wait till after everything will just drop and then just chilling out and letting my money sit and just waiting to see what the format unfolds like yeah I could pick up a deck to play post Duelist Nexus if there's a regional close to me that I can go to but if there's nothing close to me the best bet is going to be to just sit back play some casual decks experiment around with things that have come out since you know, this new ban list dropped and see if it's a deck that you want to play competitively. You know, that's another good thing about the, the off season, which is my next point that I want to get to is playing decks that you've missed out on. You know, I was looking at uh, the Hungry Burger novellas shit thing this morning, uh, just looking at combos and seeing what the deck is all about. And as much as I want to play it, side note, it fucking loses to draw into Biru. I'm just saying um, from what I've seen of combos, but that's the that's the bright thing about the Yu-Gi-Oh! offseason. That's what's great about it, is that you can go and play these decks like Nuvelas, Vanquish Souls, and see what these decks are all about, and see if, hey, moving into this next core set, is this something that you want to pick up and play, or is it just something that you want to play casually? I always enjoy messing around with Egyptian God card decks, just to play casually and see if there's any sort of theory that the OCG's crafted up that can be brought over here to the TCG. So... Guys, let me know what you do in the Yu-Gi-Oh! offseason. Do you tend to sell your collection? Do you just play at your locals? 
Uh, are you even going to go to the core booster premiere for Duel's Nexus, which I always advocate supporting your locals. I do think that you should do that, even if you don't plan on buying any sort of sealed product or singles until a new ban list drops, which I definitely plan on doing. But just let me know. Do you usually take a break from the game? I mean, Diablo 4 just dropped. Maybe you aren't playing Yu-Gi-Oh! right now because, I don't know, Life, Diablo, whatever. But, guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.